books changed my life. I started as a young boy in a home where my parents read a lot of books. My father's younger brother used to have a lending library, which meant that we were forced to borrow five books every week, read them, and then exchange them for five more books. There was no other option. Any pocket money given to us was only to be spent on books. I was an average student in school and, you know, three decades later, it feels wonderful to be in an auditorium in a school. Uh, we grew up in Madras. My parents forced me to speak Hindi, learn Hindi. So we also learned another language. And I loved my subjects, loved English. I loved Hindi. I loved learning Tamil too as a third language. I loved physics because I always wondered if you throw something, how it comes back at you at a certain speed and so on. I loved chemistry. We used to go to the lab and I loved making that golden sprangles thing. I loved biology, dissecting a frog not so much, but I loved biology. But mathematics, for heaven's sake, it didn't love me. The more I tried, the more X became elusive. It was just impossible. I grew older and older and older. I knew how to ask for my pocket money. I knew where I was going to spend it. I knew where my dad's money was coming from because he was a banker. So I knew what money meant. I knew what math meant. But to ask me what sine theta and cos theta is, to ask me to find X for somebody who loved books, 17, board exam, I failed. At that point, the road stopped. It was not whether I was going to take the right route or the left route. I was a middle child, life stopped. But my parents gave me the freedom to fail. My parents taught me that you might be here at this point and moment, but never forget that it's not your scores, but it's your passion that will drive your future. Books became my work. In the time that I failed to the time that I wrote that compartmental exam to clear that math paper, I went to work in a bookstore. It was a very large bookstore. And Madras is a great city, by the way. It has the world's and one of India's oldest bookstores, Higginbotham's. I fell in love with classics. I fell in love with fiction. I fell in love with nonfiction. But I was also working in a store. It meant that I had to go beyond my passion and also help other people buy books. I need to know how to display a book, what cover design meant, what do customers see when they come into a bookstore to buy a book, how do I recommend a book? Because people would walk in and say, what can I read tomorrow? I'm leaving on a play, what can I do this? And what can, how can I learn that? And I had to learn all of that and then started learning more and more about how books are now going to be my work. I didn't know then that this would be my career. Standing on the floor, I spent five years in that bookshop. I was fortunate. From there on, I got an opportunity to be a sales rep in a publishing house. I spent 18 years in that publishing house, being a sales rep, traveling across India, understanding the various markets, understanding how books work. And then I came to my current job, where I'm also a publisher and we publish more and more people, more and more books. But the greatest thing for me when it comes to books and language is that all of us, every one of us, when it comes to English language, only have these 26 alphabets. The greatest of stories arise out of these 26 alphabets. The greatest of words, the greatest of imagination, incredible imagination, incredible emotions start here. You can have a poem with 24 words, but that will change your life forever. Or you can read a seven volume book about a wizard that will also change your life forever. Every time I look at a book, every time I go to a bookshop, every time I meet one of our authors or one of the people who are going to create something for us, I'm astounded by the fact that so much creativity can come out of these 24 alphabets. I learned alongside my professional career to love the language was part of my learning curve to love books. I went to the moon with Tintin. I went to Tibet with Tintin. It was not just text, it was comics. Sitting in the comfort of my living room, I went to places I could never have imagined. We all have limitations of the physicality of time and space and our own life. Our lives are so busy, we don't take time out to do what we want to do. Sometimes we just can't even can you afford it because you just don't have the time. But books took me to places that I never imagined I could go to. 
books also taught me that I will always have to find X. My X is not just math. There's just so many things that I don't know about. Just sitting this morning, speaking and listening to people, I realized I'm speaking to somebody last evening as well. I realized that while I might know something, and the person I'm speaking, talking to knows something, between the both of us, there are so many things that we don't know anything about at all. And that's where books come in. Books are the primary source of knowledge. They are guaranteed to provide you with information, knowledge that you otherwise don't have, and that may help you find you, taking a cue from today's topic, a small idea. Books tell you what you don't need to know. Books tell you what you need to know. Books tell you how you can start doing something. Books tell you how you can start doing something. Books provide you incredible imagination. Can you imagine walking into that pillar nine three quarters? Would you walk into a railway station into a pillar? Can you imagine being part of that Quidditch game? Can you, being, can you imagine low gravitation with Tintin on the moon? Can you imagine the stories that imagination creates? As human beings, we have an ability to imagine not just what we see, because we share the planet with animals and other creatures who can also foresee future. Birds build nests. Mammals go into hibernation because they know winter is coming. So they have a certain sense of imagination of what is possible in the future. But the human mind can create what they have not seen, can create what they don't know about, can create science fiction that will blow your mind. And that imagination is something that I admire every time I flip over a book. Books help you understand the world. The physical aspect of a world means is that our access to the rest of the world is limited. But books take you to places. Books help you understand culture. Books help you understand language. Books tell you what it means to be a small tribal family in the Northeast fending your garden. Books help you understand empathy. Books help you understand what happens in other parts of the world during war, during famine, during research, during any, any subject that you think of helps you understand the world much, much, much better. Books help you understand empathy. One of the most important human needs is the need to be understood. You want the people that you're talking to, you want the people that you deal with to understand you, to understand where you're coming from. Understanding others also means that you also end up understanding yourself. You know how each of you react with each other. And to be able to understand each other, you need to be able to communicate properly. If you don't communicate clearly, if you're not able to comprehend what others are telling you, you will not understand each other at all. And there is a lack of empathy in understanding how where we come from. We will continue to live in a bubble that we only talk about ourselves or our own selfish interests, however good or bad the intention might be. But empathy is what books help you achieve. The more stories you read, the more lives of others that you read, the more characters that you fall in love with, or hate, or are afraid, or sad that they died, or wish they continued to be longer. The more other people's lives you live vicariously through the books and the characters that you love and read, the more and more you become empathetic about the world around you. Imagine the four sisters in Pride and Prejudice. I think they taught a lot of us about falling in love and choosing that boyfriend, or being envious about your sibling's boyfriend. I mean, Jane Austen, Shakespeare, Agatha Christie, and, I, and the list can go on and on and on. Through their works have taught us what it means to be somebody else, what it means to be a fellow human being on this planet. Books teach us kindness. The fundamental aspect about reading and reading and reading more and more, understanding how we are and how we operate, is to understand that you can achieve anything in this world by being kind. It's a very simple act. Wear a smile, be kind. Books teach you that. This is not a small idea or a big idea. Just read more books. And if you, I was talking to somebody last evening who said, where do I start? So my one request, give yourselves an hour a day. Read something that you've not read before. Read anything in any language. If you like a print book, read a print book. If you like a comic, read a comic. If it's an electronic book because you can't carry a physical book around, no problem. If you're not habituated to reading narrative, and we are a country of reluctant readers who cannot read a long paragraph because you get distracted, listen to books. Read essays, follow blogs, but read. Read every day. The more we read, the more we understand the world. 
The more we understand the world, the better human beings we become. Books change my life. And if you like them, they will change yours too. Thank you.